After shooting with the Canon 5D Mark II for years, I've just upgraded to the 5D Mark III. I'm really excited about it, though in my initial use, I've found that not all of the promises are fulfilled. We've all seen lots and lots of tests done in labs with the 5D Mark III showing off its fantastic image quality. Uh, I'm here to do some actual real-world tests with it in a variety of different scenarios. I'm going to go through natural life still portraits, natural life moving shots that kind of simulate weddings or play with the kids. Uh, I'm also going to go into the studio and shoot it. Then I'll show you some wildlife shots, some landscape examples, and even some night photography. So I'll get started by taking a couple of natural light pictures in a fairly dim room of Chelsea here in the background. Let's compare the results. At ISO 800, at this size, the web size, they both look pretty well matched. That applies for all the different ISOs. So to compare them, we're going to have to zoom way in. This is the Mark II on the left and the Mark III on the right. As you can see at ISO 800, the Mark II seems to have less noise. This is a bit surprising given all the Mark III's claims to having lower noise at higher ISOs. Let's jump up to ISO 6400. This is zoomed in to 4 to 1. Again, the 5D Mark II is on the left, and again, it seems to have substantially less noise. So let's jump up to the maximum range for the Mark II, 25,600. We'll compare the eyes once again, and here it's clear the Mark II has less noise than the Mark III. It's not a big difference, but it's substantial enough. Just for curiosity, we can take a look at the extended range of the Mark III. This is 51,200. You can see up close, it's really noisy. And this is 102,000 ESO. I'll also say the autofocus system in the 5D Mark III latches on much faster than it does in the 5D Mark II, but in this sort of still environment, the 5D Mark II did just fine. Now let's try something much more complex, a moving shot. In this dark room, I'm going to have Chelsea walk towards me, and we'll see if the camera's continuous autofocus system can keep up. The 5D Mark II got 3 out of 43 shots in focus for about a 9% success rate. The 5D Mark III got about 50%. It got 24 out of 48 in focus, which is substantially better. I'm in the backyard with Chelsea and the dogs to test the autofocus system. So I'm going to set both cameras to continuous autofocus using the center focusing point. That's the fastest one. And then I'm going to see if they can keep track of the dogs as they're running towards us. This is different than the inside test because here we're in bright lighting. So the autofocus systems have a lot more light to work with. The 5D2 with Sandy running got about 2 out of 15 shots properly in focus for about 13%. That's in a well-lit environment, but with a fast-moving subject coming right at the camera, which is basically worst-case scenario for uh, continuous autofocusing. The 5D3, on the other hand, got about 7 out of 27 for about 25%. So about twice as good with a running subject. Now, walking, the 5D3 got right about 100%. So as you can see, the autofocus system on the 5D Mark III makes it the clear winner. For the next test, I want to photograph some wildlife in the yard. So I'm going to photograph some songbirds with my 500mm uh, f4 lens here. On the left, we have the shot with the Mark II, and on the right, it's the Mark III. At this level of zoom, you really can't see any difference. So let's zoom in and take a look at the feathers. Uh, this is at four to one ratio, so each pixel is shown as four pixels here. Looking at the detail, I really can't see any difference in the areas that are properly in focus. But noise doesn't tend to show up well in detail areas anyway. Let's take a look at the out of focus background. I think the Mark III has a slight edge over the Mark II but the difference is practically negligible. Let's quickly take a look at every ESO that the Mark III offers using a Chickadee. Now, at the thumbnail level, you can see the quality appears to hold up up until we get up to about ESO 6400, and then it slides off from there. The contrast at ESO 51000 is pretty low, and the grain is apparent at 25000 and 51000, even at this size. At 1600 and beyond, the noise continues to progress and becomes obvious even at web sizes. You can see that even at ESO 100, there is substantial background noise in the green channel. This is ESO 52000. As you can see, it's pretty unbearable here. 
Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the autofocus system. And here, the 5D Mark III wins by a landslide. The 5D Mark III focuses immediately, and just about all the autofocus points are useful for focusing on the birds. With the 5D Mark II, I always had to use the center autofocus point, and I usually use the one-shot mode. With the 5D Mark III, I was able to use continuous autofocus, AI servo mode. I can keep and lock a focus on a bird and just shoot away without worrying about recomposing the picture. The final factor is the shutter speed. The 5D Mark III can take many more frames per second than the 5D Mark II. You can, of course, turn that down if you want, but I found the more frames per second really made a difference, especially with twitchy birds like chickadees, which are constantly moving their head. Chelsea and I are constantly shooting in the studio. We've shot magazine covers, book covers, CD covers, everything in here. The factors that matter in the studio are very different from the factors that matter if you're shooting wildlife or even portraits in natural environments. Here are two very standard high-key headshots. Comparing the eyes, it's difficult to see any difference in the level of noise. Let's take a look at an area of shadow underneath the chin. As you can see here, there's still a substantial amount of noise. I think I actually see a little bit more noise in the Mark II, but the difference isn't significant. Looking at the detail in the hair, I think the Mark II actually has some more aberrations in it. Uh, the Mark III appears a little bit cleaner. It's also worth noting that the Mark III includes several important improvements to workflow. I absolutely love the rate button, which allows you to give your pictures one to five stars. Sometimes you see a great picture in the studio and you want to make sure you can find it once you get it into Lightroom, and the rate button lets you do that. Uh, I also like that you can just set the delete button to select OK by default. You can use the joystick to quickly select different focus points, which really saves some time. So I came down to the beach to get some flying shots of birds and to get some landscape shots. We'll see how the Canon 5D Mark II and Mark III do tracking moving birds in the sky. Counting up the number of pictures from the Mark II that turned out, I got 97 out of 223 pictures for about 43%. The Mark III, on the other hand, got about 76% of the flying birds in focus, almost twice as good of a result. So as Arita predicted, the Mark III's autofocus system made it much better at handling birds. Uh, I wouldn't have expected it was this much better, though. So right away, there were no obvious differences shooting landscapes between the Mark II and the Mark III. They both handle equally well, they weigh the same, and they have pretty close to the same level of detail. At this level of zoom, I can't see any difference between the two cameras. Let's zoom really far into 4 to 1. As you can see, both have an appreciable amount of noise in the uh, blue gradients. This should be perfectly smooth in an ideal world. You can still see noise, but I don't see any less in the 5D Mark III. I would say they're pretty comparable. Here I raise the shadow detail in Lightroom and still the cameras look very well matched. I first got into night photography a few years back when I took a class in Boston by a famous night photographer, Lance Kemig and I'm still really into it. It's about my favorite type of photography. Um, and in fact, I bought the 5D Mark II right when it came out because it bragged about its great high ESO performance. The 5D Mark III also brags about its low light performance, so I'm excited to see how it's going to do. These two pictures were taken at ESO 100 with a two minute exposure. At first glance at this zoom level, which is what you'd use on the web, there's really no difference in quality. Here at one to one, I still can't see any difference in quality. I'll zoom into 8 to 1. Here we can see a solid blue color. The image on the left appears to be a little bit noisier than the image on the right. This would mean that the 5D Mark III is a little bit cleaner. But examining the white portion of the uh, front of the house, we can see that the left actually appears to be a little less noisy than the right. That would mean that the 5D Mark II would be a little bit cleaner. Another useful test for night pictures is to see how it handles recovering the highlights or shadows because dynamic range in night pictures tends to be pretty extreme. Uh, I tested the highlights and didn't see any difference between the two. Uh, this is the shadows. Uh, I brought it up about three stops just so you can see. And, and this, of course, exaggerates any noise in the uh, ESA 100 image, but I don't see an appreciable difference. I was excited about the Mark III before I even took the first picture because I turned on live view mode and I could actually see the night environment. When I use live view on the Mark II, everything is still so dark you can't even frame a picture. Uh, and even looking through the viewfinder at night, often you can't see well enough to frame the picture properly, but the Mark III can seem to see in dark darkness better than my human eyes can. Uh, so that was a huge advantage. The Mark III also managed to focus in near darkness too. I cover 
all the technical ins and outs in my book, uh, Stunning Digital Photography, Chapter 10. Uh, but to get really clear pictures, I usually bracket them, which is basically shooting HDR. Now, both cameras have bracketing built in. The Mark II will only do three-shot bracketing. Uh, the Mark III will actually do seven-shot bracketing. So you can bracket across a wider range, which is useful for both HDR, Chapter 11, and Night Photography, Chapter 10. Though on the Mark II, you can install the Magic Lantern firmware, which gives you much more flexibility over bracketing. So that's kind of a draw. There's no way that the 5D Mark II is better, except for price. The 5D Mark III right now is about $1,300 more than the 5D Mark II. Canon's going to keep selling the 5D Mark II so you can get a really good camera and save yourself $1,300 to spend on lenses or nice flash. If you're a landscape photographer or you're doing studio work or shooting primarily HDR, I think the 5D Mark II is the way to go. Your money is better spent elsewhere. If you're shooting moving subjects, uh, any sort of wildlife or sports, uh, including weddings where people are going to be walking around, the 5D Mark III is the clear choice. The improved autofocus system makes a world of difference. The promises of improved image quality just aren't there. I shot this to compare two camera bodies. If you want more information on the techniques I used, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography, which is available on Amazon now. Also, stop by my uh, Facebook page if you have any questions for me. Just look up Northrop Photography on Facebook. And if you want to see the raw image files that I showed in this example so you can really look closely at the pixels, just check the link in the description below. If you want more videos like this, click subscribe above and please click like down below. Thank you.